Hi, in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you the logic to solve an exciting exercise. So using this logic, you can build up your own program in your favorite programming language. So let's get started with this. And here is it. Check whether a number can be expressed as the sum of two primes. So here we have to check if a number can be expressed or expanded as the sum of two primes or not. So if that can be expanded as the sum of two primes, then we have to return those two prime numbers as the output. So in this, the first and foremost step is that we have to receive the number from the user. So here we will receive the input in the form of number from the user. And then the second step is that we have to check whether that number is an odd number or an even number. So why this odd or even? Yeah, there is the perfect reason that we have to check whether it is odd or even. That is, if you observe the set of prime numbers, then you can find the only even number is 2. And the remaining all are odd numbers. And we know that the sum of two odd numbers forms the even number and the sum of an even number and odd number forms odd number. So let us say this can be expressed as the sum of two primes and in the two prime numbers one must be two because two must be added to some other odd prime in order to make the number an odd so here one of that primes must be two so here we have one prime so we can find out other easily by proceeding to the second function so here wo minus 2 so here this odd number is called let us say that is wo and we have to check whether that wo minus 2 is prime or not so let us see an example so if the user entered 7 it is an odd number that we know that and the next step that we have to do is we have to subtract 2 from the 7 in order to get the other number so 7 minus 2 is 5 and now we have to check whether it is a prime or not. So if this 5 is a prime number then we have to return the 2 and 5 as the output. And if this function returns false then we, uh, we can return cannot. So this is when we have the odd numbers but what if the user entered an even number. So let us say that is 14. So if the user entered this even number that is 14 and let us call this 14 e in this example. So the next step is that we have to sort out all the prime numbers starting from 3 up to half of this even number. So that in this case that is 7. So why half of that and why we have to start with 3 but not with the 2. Yeah there is a perfect reason for that. So let us observe the numbers from 1 to 14 and let us make it half. So that can be at 7. So now the numbers from 1 to 7 are considered as group 1 and from 7 to 14 be group 2. So if you observe here one number from group 1 must be added to one number from group 2 in order to make 14. But Two numbers from the same group cannot make 14. So here we are having one number from group 1 and one number from group 2 to make 14. Usually when we have only one number from group 1 then we can find out other number easily by subtracting that number from 14. So that is the logic that I am going to use here. So if you observe all the prime numbers in that group 1 then we can find other prime numbers easily which are in group 2 and that makes sense to make this 14. So here we will have this array of those prime numbers and the next step is that we have to find the complement each of the numbers in this array. So here the complement is nothing but the number that we get after subtracting this number from 14 so let us say in this case it is 14 minus 3 so here the complement of 3 is being 11 and the next step is that we have to check whether that 11 is a prime or not 
so if that 11 is prime then we have to return the numbers 11 and 3 as the output and we have to proceed our process by incrementing the value of n in this step so that means we are repeating the same task for the next item in that array so here let us see for 5 so 14 minus 5 is 9 so we have to check whether that 9 is a prime or not so we know that that cannot be prime so that returns false so even if it returns false then we have to continue our process by incrementing the value of n up to the end of this array so the next one is 7 so 14 minus 7 is just 7 so here now we have to check whether that 7 is a prime or not so if that returns true then we have to return 7 and 7 can be added up to get this 14 so it is okay when there are two identical prime numbers that are added up to get this 14 or some even number so what if there are no prime numbers so after doing this process so these three steps if you have not found any prime numbers so if all the steps in these three conditions returns false then we have to return this final false statement so this must be in a loop and if this loop returns false then we have to return this cannot so in this the whole logic the confusion thing might be in this place so if you want the code in python then i will drop the link in the description box below and if you have any doubts regarding this logic you can ask them in the comment section below and if you like the video just hit the like button and subscribe for more videos and thank you for watching